service today. We're glad that you've joined us online to watch and worship with us. It would be wonderful if being a Christian took away all of your trials and troubles and all of those things that people would condemn us for, but it won't. If they hated the Lord, they're not going to like us any better. Today we talk about living a life for Jesus and living in His security. Our scripture comes from Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 24 through 39. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave to be the master, like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of the household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing is in secret that not will become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim it from the housetops. Do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who destroys both the soul and the body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. 
and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother or more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose it for my sake will find it. May God add his blessing to his holy word. There was a day in this country when the values of Christianity were expected. They were also respected. But that day is gone. In this country, Christians are persecuted. They are thought looked down upon. Jesus spoke to his disciples about this. He said, if they will call your master Beelzebub or Satan, they won't love you anymore. Today, those who follow Christ can expect to be looked down upon because of their faith. If persecution or the possibility of being labeled as hard-hearted or uncaring, because the Bible keeps us serving God and trusting in Him, you can expect that they will look down upon you. But if it keeps you from serving the Lord and doing what He would have you do, then Satan has won a victory against the work of God. Jesus has said it's enough for the disciple to be like the teacher or the servant to be like the master. The goal of a Christian should be that the world can see Christ in us and the things that we do and say. We're called to be different than the world. That doesn't mean we think that we're better than they are. We shouldn't do that. But we are called to live differently. We're called to look at the things of God, the things that he has called us to, the word of God and his guidance for us and live as close to that as we can. The world may call us intolerant. It may call us bigoted, but the Lord will call you faithful. He told us that the things we hear in the dark preach in the light and the things that we hear whispered proclaim it from the rooftops. He said, don't worry about those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Worry instead about the one who can kill both the body and the soul in hell. Many in this world have bought into Satan's lie, the lie that there is no hell, that it's only a myth. But Jesus Christ himself has told us that hell is a very real place and it's a very horrible place. And we don't want to be there. And we don't want those who we love to be there either. Jesus then gives us the promise that there's nothing that has been covered that will not be uncovered and revealed. He will reveal the truth even to those who don't want to hear it and those who don't want to see the truth revealed. Those who live in the will of God will be cared for by Him. He knows our needs. He knows our love for Him, our respect for Him. Our faithfulness to Him will not be forgotten. I know that we live in a day when it seems like many people who do wrong escape justice. It's only delayed. It is not escaped. They may get by in this world without having to pay for what they have done, but they will see justice in the next world and they will see it for all eternity. We should not be afraid to live in a right manner before the Lord. As Charles Spurgeon once said, there's no cure for the fear of man like the fear of God. God will reveal the truth 
and he will justify those who have followed him as being his own. Let me tell you that being a coward before God can have eternal consequences. Don't worry about the world. Live before your Lord like he means everything to you. We can become worried and challenged by the faces, by the things we face in this world. But we need to remember that our final destination is not in this world. We're going to heaven. And our final destination is prepared and is secure for us in Jesus Christ. Once we come to understanding that we have a home in heaven that we're going to go to, that we're going to walk on streets of gold, we're going to be before the Lord in the glory that he has prepared for us. Once we know that we will be with our Lord and Savior, the things in this world that confront us and try us and worry us are going to be reduced greatly in size. Jesus also reminds us, you're not alone in this world. You have the Holy Spirit with you. It's there to guide you and direct you in life. And it's waiting to answer your prayers for courage and guidance to do what the Lord would have you to do. Jesus spoke and taught openly before all. He didn't have one message for his inner circle and then another message for the rest of the world. He spoke plainly, openly to everyone. Those who were open to his message, the Holy Spirit revealed it to them clearly. And to those who rejected Jesus, that message went right by them and they didn't get it and they didn't understand it. Jesus spoke plainly about the day that we live in. He told us, do not be afraid to follow God. God is aware of what you face. He gave us a great example. He said, two sparrows, they're sold for one penny, and not one of them falls to the ground without your heavenly Father knowing. And you are worth more to him than many, many sparrows. He not only knows who you are, he knows the numbers of hairs upon your head. If he bothers that much to know about you, he is not going to go and not care what happens to you. You're in his hands, you're in his plans. He will watch over you. In just these six verses, Jesus tells us three different times, do not be afraid. He wants us to live without fear. He wants us to live in the trust and the courage that he is with us. And he's telling you that if you fear God, if he means that much to you, you don't need to fear anyone else in this world. If you strive to please God, the rejection of mankind will not matter. Then Jesus tells us about his expectation for our faith. He tells us that if we confess him before man, he will confess us before his heavenly father. But if we deny him before mankind, he will deny us before his father. He called for us to, deny, to proclaim him publicly. If you're a Christian, there should be enough evidence in your life to prove it. It's like the old saying, if you were arrested for being a Christian, is there enough evidence to convict you? The world needs to see that you're a Christian, that following Jesus Christ matters to you, that you are unashamed of the faith that you have in him. You'll never have a lasting peace following this world. The things that you compromise, the things that you do will hurt your conscience. They'll haunt you. They'll cause you to question why you doubted and why you feared. You can follow Jesus Christ, though, and live in his peace. Charles Spurgeon said it well. What Christ is to you on this earth, you're going to be to him in heaven. I shall repeat that truth. Whatever Jesus Christ is to you on earth, you will be to him on the day of judgment. If he be dear and precious to you, you will be precious and dear to him. If you thought everything of him, he will think everything of you. 
One day we will stand before him. One day he will acknowledge us as his own or he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Then Jesus tells us that we should not think that he came to bring peace into the world. He says, that's not going to happen. He said, I came in this earth to bring a sword. In the Sermon on the Mount, he spoke to us about having peace in our life. Yet he spoke to us about making a radical commitment to him to live in his will and in his way. It's a message of peace, but it divides us. And oftentimes it divides us with those whom we love. Following Jesus will usually make us a better person, make us a better spouse, a better parent, a better son or daughter, a better friend, and so forth. Yet sometimes it comes with a choice of do we put them first or we follow God first? Do we try and keep Jesus in our minds and in our wills? Or do we work to make someone else happy? Often someone whom we love. Jesus tells us you must love me above everything else, even those who are important in your life. Often the things that take us away from Jesus aren't bad things. They're good things. But they're things that should be second in our life and we make them our priorities. The danger of idolatry coming into our life doesn't usually come from bad things. It comes from things that are good in our life that we make too good. Then Jesus made a tremendous statement to his disciples. He said, whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. This is the first time in Matthew's gospel that Jesus mentions the cross. And it's not the cross that he's going to die on. He tells the disciples that you must pick up your cross and follow him. The disciples knew well what he meant. The roads in the Roman Empire were full of people who had been crucified so that others would see their example. That you couldn't stand against the Roman Empire without being punished. The Romans didn't negotiate. They didn't compromise. When they put you on a cross, it was for one purpose. It was to put you to death. The only hope you had was the hope that there was a resurrection and there was a life after this one. And Jesus came to make that possible. That is still our only hope today. Let me tell you that your life in this world will one day come to an end. We may find ways to delay that day. We may put it off, but as it is for sure, it will surely come. The cross that Jesus was talking about was dying to oneself and entering a resurrection life that is offered to us by Jesus. Jesus went on and he said to us, those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose it for my sake will surely find it. We can live in this life and we can do everything we can to make ourselves happy. And then we will find that we have chased after things that will come to an end. When we go to the grave, we leave it all behind. Everything we have chased, everything we have loved, we leave it here. Everything we valued, it stays. What we have lived for Christ will go with us. We can die to self into this world and we will find the peace of eternity. Or we can live in this world and we can find that it will not fulfill us. We're enjoying the blessings of Christ. We have them in this world and we will take them into the next world with us. We are offered eternal life only through Jesus. And it won't take away the trials that come in this life, but it will give us peace to live with them. He has called us and we have loved and been loved by him. And we will be until this world ends. And he has told us, he said, do not be afraid to trust me for I will take you into eternity and don't hold too tight 
to this world because it will end. He has greater for you. I hope you will trust that. I hope you will believe in that and that it will take you to be with him one day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we trust you and we love you. We have seen your grace. We have felt your peace. We know that you love us and that you are with us, Lord. So give us strength and dedication to follow you and let us find our peace, not in ourselves, but in you. For Lord, those who love you will be known by you and claimed by you one day. This we pray in your holy name. Amen.